So for the recording, what's your tag and how long you been playing? Uh, my tag is Macho Man Sam. I've been playing competitive melee since 2011. Nice. 2010 maybe. Uh, and what's like your goal right now? So my primary goal is to level up my Jigglypuff movement. I just feel like my, my movement is definitely a relic of Jigglypuff's distant past. And I would like to specifically integrate shield dropping into it so I can freely, you know, move around like three platform stages such as Battlefield uh, while, you know, shield dropping and not having it greatly, you know, having to pause to shield drop or have it greatly affect my movement. Um, like definitely a specific interaction I'd like to be able to do consistently would be like um, from like a side platform on Battlefield to just back air the platform and then instantly shield drop back air from that. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think how it works is like, since you said like 2011 till now, it's mm -hmm. it's kind of like we have to like work way up the shield drop thing because it's like pretty underrated how the other stuff like L canceling, wave dashing, wave lands, and like edge canceling and stuff like is for puff. Like it basically just nets you so many interactions. So uh, what would you say your like L cancel rate is right now? Like just guessing probably 98 percent or something yeah as long as they like you have an l cancel rate of like 80 to 85 and like you just pick randomly three games in your slippy files and i would just look at that to make sure it is that like 90 ish uh because if it isn't then that's something you definitely. i've used uncle punch to test it it is it's upwards of 90 um i i don't like love looking at slippy files because sometimes i'll miss l cancels on purpose or like uh edge cancel aerials true 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 okay so that's good uh, you do know, like, how basically Puff's, like, air movement works, like, in terms of, like, this jump is different than doing this back air. Like, in terms of how Puff works, you get instant acceleration on your back air, whereas if you do this jump, it's so much slower and it covers less distance. Does, do you know about this? I don't really know about that. That's interesting. So, do you have any more information about that? Like, it, it's like... Basically, anytime you want to jump somewhere, you should always just be back airing because of how, like, you just get the speed of the back air instantly. I don't know exactly how it works, but if you've ever seen yeah. Hungry Box play, he's always doing, like, these types of back airs in the air when he's trying to land. And he's never, yeah. like, jumping around. This is something I feel like people don't talk about that much, so I just wanted to make sure you knew that. No, sure. that's super useful information. We, uh, let me write that down real quick. Yeah. It's definitely a lot better to do this than to do, uh, than do this, so... That's very important. It lets you uh, just get around the stage quicker and actually have like more drift. Cause you don't want to like, cause by jumping like this, you're just wasting more jumps. When if you go like back and forth with like a back air or a forward air, it's just completely different movement. So that's something that's okay. pretty huge. I feel like Hungry Box in the old times. I feel like especially Mango too would be jumping around like that sometimes. And I'd be like, yeah, hey, yeah. I like the last time I talked to to Hungry Box about like Jigglypuff meta game stuff was probably like twenty. 12 or 2013 <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. been a long time <laughs> yeah. something that, like, i also think is not talked about that much is like when to auto cancel versus when to L cancel your aerials with puff it's like essentially you really only want to do like this back here like low back here trying to hit a, a dash back is pretty much what you want to do a fast all l cancel back here and then, like, you do an auto-cancel backer in place to cover dash in, or, like, also, like, a little bit of an approaching one, or the sending one to also cover dash in. There's some nuances there, but essentially, I feel like you never really want to L-cancel a backer unless you're trying to hit someone's shield, like, with a space move like this, trying to fox the shielding right there. Like, that's good. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much in every matchup. And then, uh, with the auto-cancel, is mainly just to cover dash in, or to just, like, Kind of protect yourself in place instead of throwing out like a wave dash back or like a wave dash forward i also think that's true yeah i pretty much never auto cancel bears unless i'm like retreating um but i'm curious what you were saying about like dash back after like an l cancel back air is that correct what you're saying like is a neutral it, tool or it's like yeah it's it's a neutral tool to use an l cancel fast all back air to try and beat dash back is a pretty big thing in, in the game it's a, it'll come up a lot against Marth, especially. I right, beat dash back. Okay, yeah, I thought you were saying back. like you were supposed to dash back afterwards. Nah, nah, Puff's okay. not really gonna <laughs> dash back that much in general. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, I think that 
like an L cancel vacker is like only really good in those kinds of spots or like hitting shield for sure. I feel like okay. it's talked about as well. Uh, before I get to shield dropping, I think, uh, how do you feel about wave dashing too? Yeah, yeah, my wave dashes are. I, actually, I haven't like tested my wave dash angles, but I can wave dash very consistently. Do you want me to like share screen with you just so you can see what I'm working with? Yeah, sure. Okay. I have Uncle Punch pulled up right now. Cool. Do you see my screen? Yep. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You could be technically lower to the ground. Like, mine, I barely get off the ground. Yeah. Whereas, like, yours are, like, you can see Ooh, yeah, the, yours are, the bob. Are very, like, uh, you can see this fluid. bob, but, like, this Yeah. Is, I have, like, a little bit of a what is, what is the trick to that? Is it, like, the timing of... So, you can do a short hop uh, wave dash uh, to mm -hmm. make it two frames easier to get the perfect wave dash. Okay. Uh, also, do you have notches at all? Uh, no, I don't have notches. Yeah, I think wave dash notches are really good. It's kind of like training wheels in the sense that once you have notches, you'll essentially hit the notch on like an unnotch controller because you're just used to going to that like direction on the controller. But it's really good with puff in general. Just for like, especially wave lands and like shield drop movements and like wave line movements, it's really good to get like the max distance wave dash. Because there's like going to be times where you're fighting like against a fox and like fox is nearing onto a platform and you want to like wave dash further than their nair comes out that's gonna yeah. help a lot like if you get like a, a shallow wave dash you're not even gonna be able to beat the nair you're gonna get hit by it that's a pretty common situation why like max wave dashing is really important you yeah can get... my max wave dashes are definitely not consistent i'm curious do you use a notch controller in tournament yeah okay it's like i can probably not use a notch controller but i definitely yeah. do uncle plunge to see like where you're late, like if you're late or versus early on the wave dashing, I'd be curious to see, because... Which one is it? Uh, it's at the top. Okay. Wait, no, I don't see it. Wow, do you have a different Uncle Punch than I do? That's crazy. I, I don't have the, I um, have okay, yeah, we do a different one. Wow. Yeah, I have Maybe it's up. down then. I, I think this one might uh, it, not have a wave really? dash. Really? That's crazy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, getting the newest Uncle Punch then. It's just five, okay. five bucks on uh, Uncle Punch's Patreon. It's so worth it for sure. Because, yeah, we'll like, do. this, like, I don't even know what you have in this one compared to mine. But they basically added, like, a bunch of, like, tutorial kind of things and, like, showing you exactly where your frames are off. Like, I feel like your L cancel training is probably going to be different than mine, too. Like, this is yeah. way different than, I think, that one. Yeah, I think this one is very different. I think it's definitely less useful, or the information is presented yeah. in a less, less useful way, right? Like it's just like it says fast thing at the bottom. Your timing. Yeah. So, I definitely recommend using that because <laughs> it just takes away all like the the hard stuff on like figuring out like where your movement's at. So yeah, that's pretty important to use for sure. I mean, you can also like mess around with like the OSDs in here and like try and figure it out that way. But yeah. I honestly don't know if you can get like. No, I, I I'll just. By the uh, three point oh, Uncle Punch was, uh, yeah, it's no big deal. It's really good for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, where was I? So, in terms of the wave dash, besides the short hop stuff, it's like, do you do wave dash out of shield? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it depends on the scenario. Uh, sometimes I will roll, but I'll definitely wave dash out of shield. Yeah, it's definitely like. Wave dash to the shield is like pretty much the default I would think about. I would never really think like I have to roll, unless it's like let's say you're playing against a uh, a Marth player and they're like a yeah. four smasher shield. Then then it's fine to roll. You can like roll past them and like rest them. Yeah. But like, it's just really important. You're talking to, about roll in, right? Yeah, roll in. Cool, cool. Definitely important. Just wave dash to the shield versus not wave dash to the shield. But um, besides that, like also like. I don't know how much you use it in terms of your movement, because uh, I feel like it wasn't really talked about before, like in 2010 and stuff like that. I don't think mm -hmm. 100box is trying to abuse it, but like just wave dashing to just like kind of use your jump squat to avoid moves. It's like you just like wave dash under a jab from like Sheik or Fox or something like that, and you just wave dash out of the way. You can probably just grab them. That happens a lot in terms of melee. Uh -huh. 
Like, whenever you're close to a Sheik, and, like, Sheik is trying to hit your shield or something like that, that's why V-dash out shield's so good. You can just wave dash out of shield or wave dash down. It'll just avoid jab. You can just grab him out of it. I actually definitely should be wave dashing out of shield more, so... Yeah, it's just, like... I can't think of many characters. I'm like, I can't wave dash out of shield versus... It's like, maybe there's some nuanced situations with Marth, like I was talking about. And, like, Falcon sometimes can, like, stomp out of shield and beat your wave dash. But even then, it's like... If you don't get a max wave dash, then it probably will happen. But if you do get a max wave dash, you'll probably avoid it. It's like, yeah, I would definitely be wave dash out of shielding more if uh, you're not doing it like every time. It's like, yeah, no, I'm definitely not doing it often enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's really, really good. And like in that same vein, it's like, if you're just wave dashing, like wave dash back versus like dashing movement is uh, something else I think a lot of people do or like jumping movement. It's like, there's really no reason to like not wave dash back if you're trying to retreat in this game at all. Because if you wave dash back, you can like just crouch cancel Nair, uh, like a Fox Nair coming towards you. Or like, you can try and like crouch under like a Mars grab or a Falcon's grab or a Sheik's grab. Not even really like trying to do that is your main intention. You're just trying to like reset the situation is kind of what a way yeah, that for sure does. for sure no i i'm quite good at crouching in like as a neutral tool against like the falcons and sheiks and whatnot like obviously you're not like necessarily going to be conditioning a higher level player to you know grabbing you while you're crouching but just you you make so much space for yourself by crouching okay and uh also about wave dash it's like i don't think people talk about how laggy a wave dash is to approach fox or any character in the game, you never mm. really want to be wave dashing to approach unless you're shielding most of the time because you're just going to get hit for doing it. Like I said, with the nuance of like, you could crouch cancel, or not crouch cancel, but you could like beat their like jab or something like that with a jump squat. But mm. it's like, you should never really be wave dash approaching unless you're trying to shield with your intention uh, to like shield like a fox up smash or something like that. It's just like, there's also some situations where you could like wave dash in to like threaten Falco and like let's say he like up tilted and you just wave dash in and you just like predict him to shield and you just grab him for that. That's something that'll happen, but I feel like most of the time people don't talk about how laggy wave dash is. It's kind of the same thing as like a full hop where like a full hop is like pretty laggy because you can't actually aerial out of your full hop that will actually hit something till like right here when you're falling. Whereas like a short hop you're instantly hitting something. And then like a wave mm. dash is the same way where you can't really do anything during the wave dash. So it's kind of like a setup move. And that's like how I think about it. Shield dropping, like I was saying, is also kind of a setup move. So you're talking about how you just like, we're trying to figure out like if you need a light shield or not here. Yeah, you definitely don't need a light shield for sure. Cool. It's mainly about like, oh, how I do it is like, I think about where I need to go. So mm -hmm. if Fox is in center like this, I kind of want to be like wave landing onto the platform and angling my shield like this when I land. So I'm just just wave landing onto the platform and me immediately I'm holding right on my shield so I can shield drop instantly. That's how I do it. I think other people can do like different methods, but that's what makes the most sense to me. I know Axe does a lot of like holding shield preemptively or like rolling. Like if you roll too, like let's say you're just sitting on the platform, you roll and you just angle your shield during the roll, that works too. It's just like, how shield dropping works though, is you're trying to either do it defensively or offensively. So the defensive way is mainly just trying to shield drop up there like a fox narrowing onto a platform. And that's like a defensive move. And then also you can try and do this type of back air. Like I was talking about like dashing back, it's a little bit different though, because this, you can't really do an auto cancel back air off of shield drop like this. So yeah. every type of backer is just trying to be a dash in. So this is like another situation. Hungry Box does this a lot versus Fox right now. This is like his go-to method. He'll like wave death, wave land onto the platform and then just shield drop. Like, or he'll do like he'll shield around. He'll just wave dash and then he'll shield drop after wave dashing a little bit to try and bait Fox to come in. So okay, so you're, you're usually just real quick. You're, you're doing like your shield drops a lot of the time from a wave land, right? Yeah, it, a lot okay. of the time. You never really want to land on a platform without a wave land almost all the time. Yeah. Before. Okay, yeah, yeah. I feel that. I, I, I'll land on platforms a lot of the time with an aerial, and I definitely should be doing, like, wave land more rather than just, yeah. like, always having an aerial out there. It's like, if you do an aerial onto the platform, it's like, you have to do that, like, you have to do this, this, and then you're just landing. I did a wave on there by accident. 
because you're doing this this and it's just like it's so much laggier than doing that yeah for sure yeah so definitely be wave landing anytime you land on a platform because wave lands basically you can just use them to land on the platform instead of a shield drop because you're already angling the way because of the way the wave land also you're going to be trying to get like if you have when you get a notch controller like you want to be trying to wave dash with the notch you don't want to like be like wave landing on the platform with like a really shallow wave land like i was saying that's really important and then um what else are you going to talk about so like shield dropping can be used offensively too it's like the way hungry box would do it is like let's say he's playing against fox so i get like one back here on them or four there and then they're a knockdown of pound and he would just do a shield drop pound and that's like his setup he would kind of have a lot of the time though you have to set up like a, a shield drop movement by wave dashing on the platform to try and bait a dash in that's like what hungry box basically sets up a lot of the time but i would say like in terms of importance it goes like L canceling, then wave dashing, then shield drop, and then like wave lands honestly is more important than shield drops. But like, if you don't have shield drops down, then you can't do any defensive movements on the platform. It's more about like, the other things are about either aggression or like preemptive, like beating Fox trying to jump at you, whereas like shield dropping is a basically like risk-free defensive option in a lot of situations. Cause like, the only way you lose is to like doing this type of up air or doing like this type of back air or forward air is like Fox has to like, or like let's say it's Marth, has to like run in and do like an, a forward smash with Marth or if it's like Fox, I'll have to do like crouch up smash or like dash in shield up smash like or try and like short hop nair you coming down which is a little bit tricky. So it's like the way shield drop works is like it's really good when you have uh, the lead because then Fox is more incentivized to approach. But if you don't have the lead, that's when you have to do aggressive, like, situations. Yeah. So, uh, how good do you feel, like, about wave landing in general? Besides wave um, landing onto the platform, like, wave landing off the platform. Yeah, probably not that good, honestly. It's okay. probably not that consistent. Like, I'm doing it right now, like, in... Yeah, let me see. You know, you can see that I'm not, like... I don't have tons of uh, length there. To my yeah. Wave so, okay. So, how wave landing works? Like I was talking about shield dropping being defensive. Wave landing is like the only way you can be really aggressive. There is like a defensive. I'll talk about the defensive part of wave landing. Is like, let's say I'll push Fox over here just for a little bit of mm -hmm. demonstration. So let's say Fox is like underneath the side platform, you, and you're trying to be over here. You can like do like backer, backer, or forwarder, forwarder, and try and like wave land off the side platform to try and get Fox to hit you. And then you okay, also yeah, yeah. reset your jumps. Cause that's like the main thing about wave landing off a platform is just try and reset your jumps like defensively. And then also like, what's also not talked about at wave land is like you wave land off the platform and you have the option to go back onto the platform with another wave land. And then it just basically changes the way that you're approaching. Like Fox might, like let's say it's Fox. He'll just like run under an up smash if he thinks you're gonna land after doing this wave land onto mm -hmm. the ground, but you just wave land onto the platform and you can do like shield drop up air instead. Like it just basically like wave landing allows you to change the way you're approaching the character or basically manipulate where you want Fox to be at all times. So wave landing is really important defensively. Like off the that side. makes a ton of sense. That is super good to know. Off the back of the platform. And it's mainly you wanna wave land after doing a full hop aerial like a full hop back here like this and you can wave land instantly whereas if you do a short yeah. hop and then have to do another full hop or like short hop and then do a, like a double jump it's like it just becomes really awkward and gives you time for like the opponent to react to you so it's like the mix-up of like will he wave land onto the platform or will he like wave dash on the ground it's like basically <laughs> And wave landing is so important and it a lot of folks make the mistake of not really practicing it and even hungry box at this point he's actually reverted on his meta game like this is like what i was saying this is a hungry box likes to do right now he'll just see these times with shield drop backers wave dash on the platform trying to get a shield grab this is what he was doing during pretty much off quarantine for some reason honestly mm -hmm. and then he'll do just like drop throughs like this is like kind of lazy gameplay because it never really works if the opponent is just dash dancing outside the range. So then like the counterplay is you have to do wave land off approaches, which is like uh, essentially how it works. 
is like Waveland off the platform back air hit lets you hit a dash in. So that's basically a lot of the times on the platform you're hitting dash in. And then to beat that, Fox would want to dash back, or he could do a preemptive move. Let's say it's on if this is on Yoshi's, for instance, it's a lot harder to do a wavelength off the platform approach because there's less space, and then the, that means there's less time to actually set up the wavelength off the platform. So then Fox is going to be moving in on you and be able to nair, and he'll just try and mm -hmm. stuff it out. So it's a little bit different. Like this concept, like of wavelength approach, is mainly good on like this stage, Dreamland, and like Pokemon. Unlike Yoshi's and Fountain, this stuff is a little bit awkward because of the, the ranges. So it's like, you do Waveline off the platform back air to cover dash in. Fox will try and dash back to beat that. And then, you see how Pound goes to about there? Back air goes to about here. So it basically changes the range that you can actually hit Fox. So, uh, it's just you're like mostly covering dash back with Pound? Yeah, you'd be covering, because he's trying to dash back to beat a back air. And he has to dash back to a certain spot or he's not gonna be able to cover it so you're beating the dash back by going a little bit further with pound and then it's like he would have to beat pound by dashing back again so then he dashes back again versus pound he can whiff punish it with like a back air or a nair or something like that or like a running grab or an up smash and then instead of doing a pound it's like you wave off the platform and you just sit here and then you just wait for the option with a shield or like wave dash back Preemptive back air, auto cancel, of course, or like a an up air read if you think you're gonna go to the platform. It's like this is gonna come up in pretty much every matchup, but it's mainly really important versus Fox. There, I'll talk about the other characters too. I just wanted to lay the groundwork for the concept. But yeah, like this little triangle of mix-ups that you have off the platform is really important. Yeah, for sure. Because it's like it allows you to approach against in a fast way. Because like. When you short hop approach, you're only covering like such a small distance. Like you're only covering to about here. But if you wave line off the platform, you can like basically back air in this entire range. You can do this type of back air as a defensive option. It's basically the same thing as doing this shield drop one, but it makes it so you could potentially approach instead of doing this back air. It's a yeah. little bit different. You can back air to about here. You can back air to about here. It's like you can just basically variably change the timing and positioning of where you want to back air. And then you can also just pound instead, or you can just drop. And it just basically makes the matchup, it makes a lot of matchups very easy, but just using Fox's demonstration. So, in terms of that, and also like, how much do you think you use Wavelands in terms of like, punish game aspect? Probably almost not at all. Yeah, I'll just show you like, a few situations you'd want to use wave on so i mean i clicked off fox so against fox when you like up throw him let's say i'll, I'll put him in center stage actually so at zero percent you basically have the mix-up of you get him onto the platform you wave line on the platform and grab their tech option let's say they do like roll left or roll light you just wave on the platform and grab one of their rolls that's like the flow chart at zero you can look at the puff label as well but I'm just like giving some examples and mm -hmm. then let's say you hit Fox with like an upper right here and he lands on the platform he like he either techs or misses the tech that doesn't matter you can wave on on the platform after hitting an up air and then you can try and tech chase them with this is basically to basically get a combo without getting a risk because let's say you do up air and then you just read their tech or react their tech and do another up air they slide off the platform and they're on the ground and probably gonna up tilt you. So that's what basically what happens in 2022 uh, with Puff Punish game. So it's a little bit hard to do just up air, up air again against really good foxes. So then like wavelength on the platform is basically like necessary to get the punish. So that's like a big thing against Fox. Against like, let's say Sheik for example, you hit Sheik like onto the platform with like a down throw. Then you just wave it on the platform, you can get a grab every time, is basically how it works. If you cannot get a rest, sometimes either you are not at a good percent to rest, you're down too much, and then wave it on the platform grab is just important. Because if you try and do like, like I said, jump onto the platform without a wave land, it's just so slow. Like, you have to sure. like, it's just, I, I'm, I'm so it's, like... Um, real quick, so it's, for that, for that movement there, it's two jumps to get onto the platform before your wave land, and there's... 
like a timing between this the first and second jump right like you don't just like instantly do your double jump yeah it's it's about really distance like let's say i'm over here then i don't have to do like a little yeah. bit of like an instant double jump whereas if i'm here i kind of have to delay it a second i could I see so it's more reacting to like your where you are rather than like doing a specific timing between yeah the jumps. Okay. It, yeah it's it, it's kind of like that with a lot of uh, platform movement you kind of have to see where you are and then like let's say you're over here like and you're trying to like wave land on the platform it gets a little bit tricky if you don't know like the exact it's not really a timing thing it's more about like knowing where your character is going to be but yeah. in melee you obviously kind of want to look at your opponent's character more than your own because you kind of have to trust that you're doing the right thing in your movement and your spacing and you have to know you have to react to what your opponent is doing more than looking at your own character so it gets sure. really weird to like get to the point where you don't have to look at your own character to figure out where you're wave landing and like shield dropping but that just comes with time really it's more about yeah. just like practicing different distances and stuff like that like that to like get more comfortable with it like you don't want to just like only do the same kind of like a aerial spacing and drill to like drilling timing to get onto a platform or you'll just get like too uncomfortable in weird spots essentially so yeah that uh, is basically how it works like right here i'm just doing like a, a little bit of a delayed double jump and then wave landing but this one i'd have to like delay it a lot because i'm so close to the platform it's like it's a big difference between this one and this one but yeah that's essentially how that works overall okay where else was i at I was just talking about something else. I'm getting confused on myself. But, uh, I mean, I didn't talk about edge canceling. How much is edge canceling? Um, maybe like one or once or twice every like match. Probably like an average of one edge cancel per match. Okay. Or per game, rather. Uh, do you use what's like your move to edge cancel with? Nair. Okay, so. Nair is a little bit weird. Sometimes forward air too. Sometimes forward air. Okay. So, I don't really like Nair as my edge cancel move because it's just like, it's a lot awkward. It's a lot more awkward to time than a, uh, than like an up air or like, not an up air, but like a forward air. Because of how like large of a hitbox forward air is, it basically makes the edge cancel very easy. And with nair how it works with, like it's active frames it makes you have to time your edge cancel very high in the air to be able to get like a really good hitbox of nair that hits the, the opponent whereas like if you time a forwarder it's not really that like thinking about it more i would actually just um i would say that i think i i don't really like nair after the nair like i'll like do a nair to set up like an edge cancel and then i'll do a different aerial from like after the edge cancel usually uh let me look at what you mean one sec. Like um, what I just did here. Uh, one sec. Like that. Do that. Yeah, that, that's like, that's like, yeah, that's like your edge canceling with your Nair. Uh, yeah. I, I don't really think it's like that good to edge cancel with Nair in general. I think if you're gonna do a Nair around the platforms, you want to time your Nair like this not edge canceling it to try and hit fox jumping at you because that's like mainly what nair is good for is to try and intercept a jump preemptively is basically how nair works in general with, with the character but uh it's good like to catch fox full hop jumping into you it's good like let's say your shield drop nairing like from the top platform versus marth it's good against that uh you can kind of sometimes trade with like a falcon and like nair down that way I just don't think Nair is that good to get out a hitbox from a, like an edge cancel because it's just like you never really want to be fast falling a Nair whereas you want to be fast falling your forward airs uh, for instance because you can't like auto cancel a short op forward air but like with an, a Nair it's a lot different with how the hitbox interacts with the platforms and like how you never really want to be holding down when you're Nairing and it's because you never really want to get a an L canceled Nair in this game. It's always gonna be a foul. It's always gonna be an auto cancel Nair. So that's why I don't think Nair is like good in terms of like trying to edge cancel with it. It's like it's like I said. It's mainly good to intercept a jump. Let's say Fox is trying to like upper you from here, or like uh, Falcon as well is trying to upper you. You can just try and Nair in this spot. This is what Hungry Box does a lot. He'll like try and like Nair to cover himself. And like if you like trade with upper versus upper uh, versus like Fox and Falcon. 
a lot of the times you will just like come down with them and if they're at higher percent you can just like have actually frame advantage on them and you can hit them after doing your nair after you land so that's a pretty common situation and it's also really good around this range because you don't have to like do the uh edge cancel is kind of what it is on like the smaller stages like yoshi's and, and fountain it's more of just like a mix up to that to edge canceling in general or wave landing so that's why nair is like good for that aspects but i don't think it's good for setting up a, a an edge cancel because it doesn't give you like the fast fall that you want because you really want to be going for a fast fall after doing a uh an edge cancel in general yeah, I hadn't been thinking about edge cancels that much. Um, it's just something I do as like a sort of movement, like mix up in very rarely again in games. Uh, what do you, do you have like specific neutral situations that yeah. you look for those in? So let me put Fox over here again. So this will come up versus Fox, Sheik. Uh, this comes up versus Mark too. Essentially any character where they're either under the platform or they're about right here. You want to be threatening the fact that you can edge cancel because like I was talking about with Waveline off the platform, that's really important to like be defensively get back to stage or have the ability to land on the platform and like change your positioning. Edge cancelling is basically the same thing, but doesn't have to allow you to be over here to try and like Waveline off the platform. So like if Fox or some other character is in this spot, they're going to try and hit you. And to avoid that, you would either want to go to top platform, that's one mix up, but the other more aggressive mix up, which is better in a lot of ways than going top platform is to try and edge cancel with a downer into an up air this basically is a combo that works on every character and it's really good so like if fox let's say tries to jump at you with a back air here and you edge cancel down air before right as like fox is about to jump right here then you hit them with the downer they're in hit stun and then your up air comes out if you fast fall it you have to fast fall after doing your edge cancel or it's not really going to be a good move so you'd want to like do downer edge cancel is the main one forwarder works too a lot of the time as well uh you can kind of like like we were talking about with like the wave line setting up like like the timing versus like just thinking about distance and knowing where you are it's kind of the same thing with edge cancels you can kind of like practice like specific timings and like distances uh in like uh, like uncle punch is what i would do is like i do like this one's very common do this one like i can just do like a rhythm essentially i can get to a rhythm moment and like in game it's a little bit different than wave landing because it's something you're choosing to be in the position you're not like for you it's not like you're going for a punish where it's variable timing and variable spacing it's something that you can choose to like land in like it's not like you're at the mercy of the other character as much as like trying to get a punish on a platform this is mainly to just like land so you can just basically always put yourself in the same timing positions over and over again it will get predictable though when you do that but when it starts to get predictable then you just go to top platform let's say fox tries to up air you right here and goes for like a short up up air and hits you for doing an edge cancel downer on them that's gonna happen a lot if you're playing against a good fox so you'd have to just start mixing it up and go top platform that's just something will happen so it's mainly good to edge cancel when your opponent is next to you like here to here is like where i would start edge canceling mainly your edge cancels want to be on this this side of the platform you never really want to edge cancel on uh on the other side that much when you want to edge cancel on the other side it's mainly the, sa the same situation of doing this type of wave land off but it's because you're above the platform like facing it like this so you really only want to do edge cancel drill or edge cancel fair and do an up air it's mainly your real combo there uh sometimes yeah, I, you... I definitely never edge cancel drill that is super useful information yeah it's just good because of how long the hitbox is out and like it's meaningful in the way that it's gonna collide better with the hitboxes with whereas nair's hitbox is really awkward and you can't you can't hold down while doing your uh, nair. You can hold down while doing a drill, so it means you're fast falling. So that's okay, that's, 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 what, that's that's the difference between them. Like you can hold down on there, but then if you like mess up your l your edge cancel, you're gonna get like an you're gonna get you're probably gonna miss your l cancel, of course. And then like let's say you like mess up your timing, you land on the ground after trying to fast fall it, and it's just like it gets really awkward in terms of using nair. So you'll never pretty much see hungry box use nair to edge cancel. You'll always be using nair to land onto the platform like this or land like 
kind of here with his snare as well too. I have two questions about that the the down air yeah. edge cancel. Uh, the first one is is do you face inwards or outwards when you do that? It doesn't matter. You can do it doesn't matter. Yeah, you can do inwards or outwards. Generally, oh. it's probably because you're going to be back airing like this, so you want to be edge canceling with the back of it. Is most of how it works because. When you're in the corner, like, you're almost always going to be wanting to back air to try and get out of the corner. You never really want to be yeah. facing the opponent trying to fair the corner. So all your edge cancels are pretty much going to be this way. So. As uh, and a rule of thumb for edge canceling down air, do you want to do it um, after most of the animation, like most of the hitboxes have come out? Um, like, is that when you want the edge, the edge cancel to occur? Or do you want it to occur earlier in in the, uh, the animation, like, you know, before uh, most of the hitboxes have come out? So if you're using fair, you'd want to do it uh, instantly because. Uh, no, I mean specifically with down air. Oh, uh, with down air, you can you can do it at any point, but mainly it's usually at the end because of like you kind of want to be edge canceling from up here. You don't really want to be a short hop edge canceling like off of a platform. That's not really like mm -hmm. what edge. This is like this is like not as good as just doing this or doing this. Like yeah, it's not like as good as like a mix up at all. Or you can just like, you know, just do that or like, you know, it's like not as good to just do a short hop edge cancel. So it's mainly going to be coming from like up here. So it's always going to be at a, a low point because also the like doing this downer covers you from them like jumping up here and hitting you like in this spot. So that's why you want to be doing the downer pretty early and like landing usually with the end of it. Assuming that it makes does. perfect sense. Yeah. And then um, what else do I want to talk about? So, does your uncle punch have exercise? What is exercise? Uh, it's basically just like. A oh, exercise! Yes, I think so. Let me check here. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I would really recommend playing that if you haven't at all. It sounds a little bit silly, but it's really, really good to practice everything that I'm talking about because okay. it forces your movement to be perfect. I do this all the time in terms of trying to get my movement up because it gives you goals and you can see like tangible improvement in terms of like how many eggs you're breaking. Uh, I've talked to other top players about it and they love it as well. Like I've seen Mango play it a lot. Uh, like I know Forrest does a lot too. Like it's just really good for making your movement perfect. Because a lot of how it works is you kind of need to solo practice your movement before you do it in like friendlies. Let's say you're playing against a Falca player, you're not gonna be able to practice this stuff <laughs> against Falca that much because of how like annoying laser is. Or let's say you're playing against a Marth and he's just like swatting you before you can even set up your spots. It's like it basically forces you to just like play their game a lot of the times, and that's gonna be like a part of melee. And it makes your like windows to practice this type of stuff smaller. So it, it gets to the point where you have to practice it a lot in Uncle Punch before you can even practice it in friendlies. So I think this is very, very helpful in terms of trying what, to- What do you go for in exercise? Like, I, I just- you, you, you can only break them with strong hits, right? Yeah, I would just you mainly try and backer them or upper them and try and like edge cancel your movements to try and make it easier on you. And you could just like practice wave landing and like, like wave land off the platform up air is a pretty big one. They go top platform, you do a wave line here, you do an upper here. Like, you're basically practicing all the movement. It's really good for wave landing, especially too. So, you kind of have to be able to wave land like really well to be able to do this like exercise in general. Because getting like this upper right here to reset your jumps is just important for exercise. And it's really important for the game too. So, I'd recommend doing it for sure. And then, uh, I forgot to talk about this one last one. Do you know what teeter cancel is? so so it's kind of like an edge cancel but you're not really edge canceling in the fact that you're still staying on the platform and you see how i did an smash instantly it basically yeah. allows you to do any move after touching the like kind of the edge of the platform because you get into okay this, you get into this animation it lets you do a turnaround grab it lets you do a pound it lets you do a forward smash like i was doing it's kind of new school tech it's not like Hungry Box, for instance, doesn't do it yet, but it's something that Solo Battle has been messing around with, and it's really good to like get uh, a punish game aspect. Uh, it's kind of similar to, let's say, doing a wave dash off the platform. It's kind of similar to that. Let's say Fox is jumping at you, 
and then you're up here again you do a teeter cancel instead of doing an edge cancel and then you do a turnaround grab when they land on the platform and then you kill them for that that's pretty common because let's say you do the edge cancel instead of doing the teeter cancel uh and then you do this up air and fox is over here and you actually don't hit him with the up air whereas the teeter cancel would have allowed you to get the grab so it's like basically an optimization type thing uh you can sometimes do it off of like an up throw like you up throw them onto the platform do then you do the teeter cancel and then you just do a turnaround grab as your punish They're like reacting to where like they're rolling to that's another common situation it's a little bit like it's a little bit difficult to do for sure uh because you're like you're thinking about your edge cancel timing and then you have to do a slightly different timing and spacing to get the uh the teeter cancel so it's a little bit weird but it's really good to uh maximize your movement as well too i would say you definitely like want to focus on the other ones more though because teeter canceling is a little bit awkward for sure but yeah is I there a specific aerial that you primarily or even only use for teeter canceling like you just do down air yeah, you, do you you definitely well? always just do down air you're never really going to do a back air teeter cancel because down air again like how the move works it's just so like easy to time this like the spacing like if you've ever done like like just doing down air into down air it's like you can just basically follow the opponent's sti and like you can like control your drift really easily with down air that's why down air is the main move of choice in all these situations because of how easy it is control comparatively to like nair where it kind of allows you to go all or nothing with nair a lot of the time it's pretty hard to like make a controlled movement and same with forward air it's like both those moves are hard to keep your drift steady, I would say. So most of the situations are always going to be down there. But I can definitely talk about, like, situations I would do doing shield drop stuff. Like, versus, like, specific characters. Like, every, like, shield drop punish, if you want to talk about that. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I mean, you, you mostly answered my questions about the shield drop neutral, but definitely learning a bit about the punishes with them is useful. I know you can, like, you can rest Marth's up tilt yeah it's like flats let me try and get it i think i can move them over here i think i put them over here i hate uncle punch sometimes it's really annoying there we go oh my god okay it's not letting me do it but it usually allows me to move them back and forth but i'll just put them here so let's say Mar like yeah shield drop resting mars up tilt is a pretty common one you can also shield drop rest his forward smash a lot of the time too i would say like shield drop resting up tilt is sometimes pretty cheesy to do it's not like a guaranteed punish overall but it's something at least a lot of the times when i do try and do a shield drop uh punish on an up tilt i usually shield drop and then i just just instantly up tilt a lot of the time because they're trying to jump or like roll a lot of the times after doing the up tilt if they think you're going to shield drop rest them or I just grab their shielding. That's a lot of the times that'll happen off a shield drop up tilt punish. So it's like you can definitely rest it, but it's pretty hard to do if even like if you're practiced on it. Uh, some other shield drop punishes, like let's say it's against Sheik. Sheik, like you can kind of rest most of her moves, like shield drop rest. I'm not good at shield drop resting because I don't. It's like it's an optimization thing versus like. You can do shield drop up air versus her nair, her fair, her back air. Uh, most of those moves have to be timed badly by Sheik or spaced badly. Like what I mean by that is like the shield, like you have to be like inside puff shield to get hit by that. So like shield drop rest is like, I don't know. It's a little bit weird. I think it's like, okay for the metagame, but sometimes it's just better to just do the, the tried and true shield drop up air, honestly. Yeah. Uh, you can also shield drop rest smarts forward air as well too. It's like a lot of optimization from shield dropping comes from shield drop rest, but you could just do a safer option and do up air. And a lot of times, like you can shield drop rest Fox's nair. Uh, what other ones you can really shield drop? You can shield drop rest Samus's nair. You can shield drop rest. Like... Sorry, can you, I don't understand. Like when they nair you and they land on platforms, is that you're saying? It's like they let me just go to let me just pick my character as Fox. Oh, I just did that wrong. But yeah, let me just do Fox to show you the Nair I'm talking about. So they're on the platform, and then you would Nair onto the platform, and basically how the Nair would be timed is they would hit that Nair like right there, so it would hit your shield, and then you just shield drop rest instantly after getting hit by it. 
So that's basically what it is. It's not, it's not doing this type in there like that, that goes like over your shield onto the platform. It's not this snare. It's like this snare that lands like this. And then you can be able to shield drop rest the ending of the snare. Cause it'll be high on shield. So you can just shield drop rest it. So we'll not have the frames to actually punish you. And that's basically how the forward air stuff works too. You can't shield drop rest Fox's back air, for instance. You can shield drop back air. I mean, you can shield drop up air it sometimes, but it's not the same thing. Go to some other characters and see what I want to talk about. But for like... So in terms of Falcon, Falcon's the worst character to shield drop against. Besides Sheik, that's on the ground. Like, you don't really want to shield drop against any character as like a rule of thumb if they are already below the situation. If they're already on the ground next to you below the platform let's say it's like a, a fox or a falco they're just going to be spamming up tilt versus your shield and it is very hard to time a shield drop that beats their up tilt most of the times to beat that type of stuff you want to be wave landing off the platform and back airing them like this or doing like wave off off the front of the platform or doing the same type of back air so like shield dropping is really good to try and do defensive stuff like i was talking about or to try and do a shield drop pound is more of an aggressive option so it's like it's like a bad, it's like a, how do I swear it? It's a easy way to punish bad spacing a lot of the time or to preemptively cover, uh, like not pre preemptively cover like platform approaches. Let's say it's like Peach and she's on the top platform, right? And she's trying to like hit you on the side platform. Let's say she does like a forwarder onto the platform. You can shield her off up air right as her forwarder touches the platform and then hit her with an up air. That's a pretty common one. The Fox situation that I was just talking about with the shield drop up air uh, versus rest situation. Let's say he nares on the platform. Before he even touches your shield, you just shield drop up air because you predict him to go on the platform and you don't lose that much. Let's say he's just dashing in center stage instead of doing the shield drop nair. I mean, instead of doing the run onto the platform nair and you shield drop up air expecting a nair to come out. A lot of the times you can react, but sometimes you can't uh and he's just dashing in center he has to still like make a commitment or like a read on your timing or like hope you like throw out a random backer right and just like with punish that so it's like a lot of the shield drop stuff is very easy to do without like risk but the only risk is when the opponent is below the platform because like let's say it's chic you can't uh shield drop versus chic's up tilt like if chic is just spamming up tilt on your shield on like let's say it's yoshi's you can't shield drop versus that. You have to jump away. Uh, another situation is like, how do I describe this? Let's say Marth is neutral area under the side platform. It's very hard to beat that with a shield drop. So you just want to jump away. And that's basically where the edge canceling stuff comes in. Like that's when you want to start edge canceling is when your opponent, like I was saying, is like here to here. Like that, like you want to be jumping away instantly when your opponent comes under the platform or like into center on your space. Is that essentially how it works. Like, most of the time, your shield drop punishes are going to be uh, off an up air, uh, reading your opponent to come onto the platform, or trying to punish your opponent hitting you on your shield. It's like, yeah, like I said, versus certain characters, it's a little bit weird, but in general, shield dropping is just really important in terms of like defensive situations, because the wave landing stuff is the all aggressive stuff, but yeah. So, there's like empty shield drops, which is not really something I really want to talk about, but it, it does exist. So an empty shield drop is just trying to get onto the ground as fast as possible to try and get back to center. But this type of shield drop is really only good when your opponent is centered and you think there is, like I was talking about the dash dance part instead of like doing the shield drop up here like this, it kind of makes it awkward for the opponent to start dashing in to try and like either go onto the platform or go onto the platform for, with a nair. It gets this awkward spot where you can kind of empty shield drop and then try and grab them for dashing into the corner and trying to take space on you. Or it gets to the point where you can just like get underneath them on the platform if they nair onto it and you're on the ground already because you didn't empty shield drop instead of doing like a shield drop uh, back air or shield drop up air. It basically has it so you always have the ability to react to what they're doing. Whereas doing this type of up air is not really reacting a lot of the time if it's preemptive, like trying to read Fox nearing onto the side platform or reading like, let's say you're doing this type of back air instead, trying to read Fox dashing in. It basically allows you to react to both options. It's kind of, 
It's a little bit weird because if your opponent reads you for doing this empty shield drop and tries to like run in instantly and nair you instead of doing just dash, it it's bad because you don't have a hitbox out. Like if you had a backer out or an upper out, you would have been protecting yourself versus an, a preemptive option by Fox. So this mm -hmm. empty shield drop is pretty good in moderation. It also covers, let's say they try and shield your back air, you just empty shield drop and grab. So that's like another situation that comes up too. But yeah, so I think that's it for shield dropping. I'm trying to think of other stuff, but like, let's say you're playing against like Yoshi or something. Uh, <laughs> on the platform situations, you really don't want to be shield dropping versus a character like Yoshi in general, just because of his super armor. So that's like the only other nuance, because it gets hard to actually get a meaningful hit on Yoshi. Let's say he's under the platform, and you try and do like a shield drop back air setup. He'll just parry you, and then do a shield drop, and then he'll just do parry and air. And that, that'll come up a lot too. So against Yoshi, you just want to be doing more edge cancel stuff and trying to jump off stage. So that's like the only other nuance I can think of in terms of like character specific stuff. But yeah, uh, do you have any questions? No, no, you really answered all my questions. I, uh, I think I have a much better grip on it now. Like, definitely didn't understand before the like how wave landing played into that like shield drop neutral and like integrating that is exactly what I'm looking to do. So definitely appreciate the uh, the information there. Cool. So what I would do after this is I would just be spending most of my time just in Uncle Punch. I wouldn't even be going into games like I was talking about. I think like. I would probably only do Uncle Punch in an hour burst. Like, that's the max amount of time I would spend at once doing Uncle Punch before your brain kind of explodes. <laughs> because, like, it's just, like, not that helpful. Like, it's kind of like diminishing returns after an hour is what I've I've experienced and what I know other people have experienced, too. So I'd probably only spend, like, an hour at a time and, like, take a break before you go into the next hour or so. But yeah, I would only spend my time mainly practicing, I think, Wavelands and, like, the edge cancel, like, mainly only using down air instead of using forward air and air are both really important. And then, like, kind of positioning yourself and, like, varying your timings to make sure you're not doing only one timing on, like, the shield drop Waveland stuff. But, like, obviously, like, like I was saying, you can do the same, the same timing for, like, edge cancels, and, but, again, it makes it kind of predictable, so you have to, like, mix it up a little bit, so... That's so I have a question. Um, yeah. When you're wave landing off a platform, are you already like kind of holding down to try and get the fastball there? Yeah, I'm. I'm okay. gonna be holding down every time when I'm trying to wave land, because like you don't want to do a wave land and then you're f we're falling like that. Like that's a lot different than the wave land where I'm doing yeah. this. Like, because then you have the option to empty. Like you could also empty land off a wave land too. I don't think I talked about that. It's the same exact concept of empty landing off a of shield drop. It just but makes it so you don't have to commit with an aerial and then be able to catch like a dashing in and then uh or dashing how do you um, how do you time the fastfall for the, for that like do you are you already inputting down like before you start the wavelength like when, when does the down input begin here so i would do the first i would do my notch input like i'm doing my notch input or do like the max wave dash you can get essentially so you mm -hmm. time that and then instantly when you notice your character touches the ground or like sometimes you don't really want to look looking at your character like i said it kind of gets the timing where you just input down after you do the the wave dash input first so you don't want to do the wave dash input angle and then you input down after so that's essentially what you're doing as like a main turn or like if you do an up air first you want to do like you want to do the upper then you do down so that like that that changes it of course but yeah or you do yeah Do you have any other questions? No, no. Uh, we're good to go. Okay. Uh, thanks for getting a lesson. Yeah, man. I really appreciate you taking the time to meet with me and teach me the stuff. Yeah, no problem. All right. See ya. Later.